All right, we are talking Dolly Varden Silver today. Call sign DV, Toronto Venture Exchange, D-O-L-L-F-O-T-C-Q-X here in the States. And we've got the head treasure hunter, CEO, Sean Kuhn Kuhn. Going to run through a little news here. Uh, Sean, been a while here. Good to see you here. Um, I'm building off some fantastic results here earlier in the month. Uh, a lot going on. Um, yeah, I guess uh, what's front and center here with Dolly Varden? You know, when you talk about the chart, what I see is I see a company that was trading at uh, $1.25 Canadian, you know, a company that was valued at $315 million. And uh, it's on sale right now. You know, we're trading at like 60 cents on the dollar. You know, we're down at 70 cents Canadian, about a hundred and call it $170 million valuation. So poof, $150 million in value was eroded. And the sad thing is, like it's not looking bad compared to some of our peers, which just kind of shows the devastation out there that's in the resource sector. But for me, as the, as you put it, the head treasure hunter, you know, I just, you know, it's pretty, dis, it's pretty disappointing. But when I, when I take off my CEO hat and I look at it from the investor standpoint, it, it marks an opportunity. I was down at uh, Rick rules conference, um, few weeks back. And I started my presentation by saying, like, we should be smiling because this is an opportunity. This is a tremendous opportunity. This is a time where we know where these metals are going. They're actually trading at a really good number. Like, think about this. You've had interest rates rising and the gold price is close to $2,000 an ounce, like an all-time high. And rates have gone, have never risen at such a fast rate. Like this, this marks and rivals the fastest rate hiking periods in history. And the gold price is hanging out. Well, this is what you should expect because that's what happens with the gold price when you still have the real rate of inflation higher than where the rates are. So this is to be expected. But my point here is, the U.S. dollar has been pretty strong on a historical basis, and and the so what happens if the rate rising trajectory, you know, declines, or the dollar falls over? What's it going to mean for the gold price? Like we're headed to three thousand, and what's that going to mean to the silver price? You know, we're headed to fifty and beyond. Um, so. My head's up because I was just at site twice in the last two weeks. I'd just coming back from a site visit two days ago up at our project. I got five drills turning. We've drilled about 37,000 meters. Uh, we've only put out 10 holes. So I got a whack of drill, drill holes to put out, like probably in the magnitude of over 100. Um, so a lot of results. We had a good year last year. I want to build on the success we had last year and keep growing the mineral footprint here. Um, we're cashed up to do it all. So we're grateful for that. Thank you to our shareholders for that. And um, I also know, and, and we talked about this, like in the last 10 years, there's there hasn't been a lot of good times for resource investors. But even having said that, Nothing goes down forever. Even in that last 10-year period, there's these moments, these windows. And if you think about how far we've all fallen, I don't care if you're a multi-billion dollar company or you're a little million dollar company, everybody's been hit really hard since April. Nothing falls forever. So, you know, you're right. There, There is a reprieve coming. The question is, is it a reprieve or is it really the, a major start of the next bull phase But I also think that like we are in a bull market. This is my thinking, Rob, if if, for for what it's worth, these are my two cents. I believe the bull market began in 2016. Like the bear market ended in December of 2015 with $1,000 gold. Uh, The bull market began in 2016. Um, It was, it's that's the disbelief phase, right? Uh, I think we're in the acceptance phase of the bull market. Um, where I think all of your your viewers want to see is they want to see the mania phase. But there's we're get, we got a little we got a little bit of time between acceptance and mania. But um, like stick with it, double down. I, I listen. I said this last year. Dolly Varden shares were thirty five cents last year, and I said like this is the time, right? And I'll I'll say it again. 
this is the time. And I don't care if we go incrementally lower between now and where we're going. I got a great project. Uh, it's got the size, it's got the scale, it's got the grade, it's in the right location. I'm not going to quit. And um, that's it. Yeah, you've uh, obviously got the project there. You're you're working hard. So let's uh, let's let's hit on a point that we talked about here. Um, you've got a um, gold and silver cannot be denied. Um, they're 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 running with the dollar, uh, taking a breather. Fine, um, but as as far as moving forward here, um, once they do let their foot off the gas, which they most assuredly have to, or there won't be anything left of this. Then, it, to your point, the metals could run. So let, let's let's talk about why the metals are in good shape, but but the disconnect of the the juniors. I mean, if the supply chain isn't adequately you know financed, um, where where does this go long term? Are we playing catch up now, or do these companies all come out of the woodwork then when we start moving the metals higher? What happens to all the destruction that's been done here? And again, to the, the head treasure hunter, kudos to keeping you in the game. You got to be in the game to win the game. If you can hold on and not dilute the company, well, you know, good on you, but but you got to be in it to fight. So so talk about the lack of respect for the junior mining market here, Sean. Well, from my perspective, um, look, why does one own gold or silver? You know, and there's different reasons to own gold and silver, right? Uh, for some, it's, you know, on the silver side, it's really, hey, they need this stuff to, you know, go build a solar panel or they need it in an industrial usage. And if we look at some of the statistics that are coming out, tells us there's going to be a pretty big deficit this year, like a 200 million ounce deficit, right? And so, but th that doesn't impact the shares of a Dolly Varden or a junior explore co it doesn't there isn't that correlation that is you know lockstep and barrel in terms of you know price and junior um so if we look at who buys these shares the buyer is got less disposable income i i can speak for canada for example right so you know i live in a, a town where it's an expensive town there's some pretty big mortgages those mortgages were being serviced at 2%. Now they're being serviced at 6 or 7%. So there's, you know, in for some families, there's literally thousands of dollars a month of disposable income that has evaporated to pay debt servicing costs. So there's that. Um, and that takes away some buyers. So what's it going to take? What's it going to take for money to flow into the space? We need to see institutional money, well, it's becoming more and more challenging for institutions to buy small companies. They're making it more and more difficult because of liquidity constraints. We just saw, Rob, listen to this. Why did so many companies get beat up so much June 30th? Because the ETFs that own some of these larger companies, they decided to sell all the little ones and focus on the five big ones. So at a time where the retail investors getting squeezed with inflation, the institutions made a decision that this was time to focus on size. So it's like a double double slap in the face. Um, now, we can sit here and talk about the 100 reasons why it's difficult to move a project forward. But think about it this way. Mining companies have not um, invested in exploration. They've not invested in replenishing their resources. So all these things that make it actually tougher for the dollies of the world are going to make the prices go even further because there's going to be that much of a lack of supply. So if you can find a way to survive, you will be rewarded. And all these things are actually adding, you know, wood to the fire. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think what you just, uh, let's, let's build a, a synopsis here in a, in a an investment thesis for why to get involved in Dolly Varden. Um, yeah, a lot of value, uh, <laughs> a lot of value gone. Uh, yeah, not a lot of companies able to really jump in. So yeah, what's uh, uh, the average person that comes to you and says, hey, Sean, uh, yeah, I like what you're doing. I like the amazing hits you got. I love the five drills going. I love it all. But yeah, I got squeezed like you mentioned. Uh, what's your call to them with Dolly Varden? Why get involved? Well, you know what? What I want to say to everybody listening is in order to make money, you have to take risk. 
Okay. So I don't want to like, like sign up for this, knowing what you're doing. Okay. We're not, we're not selling blue chip investments here. Okay. We're out there trying to grow deposits. Okay. So know what you're signing up for number one. Um, and, uh, and I think that's an important thing to say. But once once that disclaimer, once the forward-looking statement's out there, well, look, I, I really think when I and, – and I've been doing this for 20 years, and I do this like 12 hours a day, sometimes 16, seven days a week. When I analyze the space, I find 20 companies that are real in silver. That's it. There were more 10 years ago. But they've all gone and become gold companies or become base metal companies or died or been swallowed up and acquired. Okay, so you got 20 companies. So I believe I'm one of 20. You know, what sets me apart? We're in Canada. Where do I want to be? Either Canada, the US or Australia, period. That's it. And so I got something where we've got some size, we've got some grade, it's in the right location. But I don't. You know, I want people here who understand the risk. And I really feel like at Dolly Varden, we audition our shareholders. We say to our shareholders, look, are you going to give us time to build a business? Why are you here? It's because you believe in the price of silver. Are you here because you want the metal? If you look at who our shareholders are, they're Hecla, they're Eric Sprott, they're big institutions. They're real. And they're giving us a chance and they're giving us enough capital to drive this thing forward. So if you check all those boxes, yeah, come on our team, but don't come with any expectations of of a calendar in mind. Come knowing the risks. And then for those who are willing to do all that, man, I think the rewards are going to be pretty good. They're going to be very good. So we'll work hard. We 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 don't put silver in the ground, but we we what we do do is we are working with the best scientists that know how to follow up on the past producing mines that we have on the property and the new deposits we're discovering to grow them. And I think, you know, you do that, you work hard, good things happen. But at the end of the day, this is a business that's all about timing, right? And um, I don't have a crystal ball, right? But, um, you know, look, we got, uh, this is a bit of a somber <laughs> interview, right? But it's also a realistic one. I don't want people to get hurt. I want people to come knowing what they're getting into. It is a tremendous business. You know, like you call like you hunting hidden treasures. Like, are you kidding me? Like who doesn't want to be, you know, hunting a hidden treasure? It is an exciting business and doing it with the modern technologies and the best scientists and, and, and the rewards that you can get from that. Um, I was I was listening to some old uh, interviews that Chris Taylor was doing with Great Bear Resources, you know, when the stock was pennies, right? And you know the company went from fifteen cents to thirty dollars. Well, Chris is a brilliant scientist. He worked extremely hard, and it took him I don't know the exact time, but it took him years, years. You know, he looked like a twenty-year overnight success. Right. And um, but you know what, if you're willing to sign up for that, you know, this business can be extremely rewarding. OK, certainly a lot to pay attention to. And uh, yeah, well said there. I guess we'll uh, look forward to seeing you uh, in Las Vegas here at the Silver Symposium coming up in a month or so. And certainly look forward to checking back in when you have some more drill results. That's Sean Kuhn Kuhn, head treasure hunter, CEO, Dolly Varden Silver, DV, Toronto Venture Exchange, D-O-L-L-F, O-T-C-Q-X in the States. Good to talk to you, Sean. See you in a month. Looking forward to seeing you in a month.